Hey, Lindsay, Happy New Year. So good to see you. Today's show is about getting around easier. What's one thing you're going to talk about today? So today, among many other things, I'm going to talk about this awesome collapsible walker, lightweight, easy to transport, that and much more. Awesome. Can't wait to hear about it. Let's go to our intro. So as a gerontologist, I am always working with family members who are dealing with big decisions. You know, do we purchase home care? Do we purchase senior living? Do we get mom out of a skilled nursing and adult family home or into our memory care? I'm working with families who are trying to take care of a loved one at home. And one of the big things that is the determining factor on whether someone asks for help, needs help, is can they get in and out of a car? Can they get in and out of bed? Can they get onto a toilet and off a toilet? Like those things radically shape someone's life. Absolutely radically. I know from my own experience, breaking a leg, um, when I came home from the hospital, I could barely get inside. I could barely get out of the car and then walk inside my own house because I don't have a lift. I don't have a ramp. I have steps. Right. And I ended up being locked in my house for a while while my, my, while my leg was healing because I didn't think about transfers. Um, I am curious what you have explored in your work around this area of transferring, because a lot of families don't realize that's, that's one of the biggest, the biggest issues that an older person will face and will change everything in the life if we don't solve it. So I'm curious what, what some of your thoughts are. You know, this is such a huge thing. And I, I approached this in maybe a unique way in that I wanted to show that it's not just the traditional transfer devices that most people think of. Sometimes it's um, personal changes to something that the person is wearing, something the way somebody does something. So I tried to approach this in as broad and maybe unique out of the box way, because I think we often get pigeonholed into thinking of the same strict guidance of transfers. And I, I want to kind of open people's eyes and minds to some of the alternatives that exist on the market. So that's really what I want to dive into in this presentation. Awesome. Well, let's see, what are people coming up with that'll make it easier to help someone you love transfer? Or if your loved one lives in a senior living community, like a Kelsch community, Absolutely. what Absolutely. are tools that can make their life easier? Okay, so I'm jumping in with a really weird one, right? Nobody's talking about your shoes when they talk about transfers, but they should be. And the reason that I want shoes to be on the list is one of the biggest ways to prevent falls is to support good footwear having a good shoe versus a slipper that they might slide their heel out of or twist an ankle or stub a toe. Having good shoes is such a, an important piece of the safety um, puzzle. And so I have selected three shoe types here, all sharing one similar feature. None of these shoes require you to bend over to apply them, which I think is so awesome. So the Kizix, you may have seen them around. They're kind of a social media darling but they have all of the legitimate design to go along with their popularity. I own Kizik shoes. As you can see in the picture, they have like this little heel mesh system that allows you to step on the heel over and over again. And that heel will always pop right back up into position. You will not destroy the shoe. And they come in a whole bunch of sizes, types and styles. They now have kid sizes, which is awesome. They come in wide. Um, they can accommodate some swelling. I use them on my own grandma to help with her being able to get shoes on safely, not have to bend and have supportive footwear for her mobility. The Nike flyies are for those who are a little hip and want something kind of out there. Same concept though, an easy no bend shoe. The Zebas are newer to the market, but I really like them for those who are maybe a little leery of something that's kind of too stylized or looks a little bit um, different. The Zeba shoe is really popular amongst my male clientele who want just a normal looking shoe but it also has the pop-up heel. Absolutely no bending. You don't need any tools to get these on. You never have to tie and untie them. Just an awesome way to prevent falls starting with footwear, which I think is something that doesn't get enough talk. Yeah, I can see what you're saying because that issue can totally impact someone's day. If you have to require someone to come into your room and help you get your shoes on so you can get to breakfast, you might be waiting 15, 20 minutes for a care partner to be able to arrive. Whereas you got the right shoes, put them on, you're down to breakfast um, or at home. You want to and you're not, 
Yeah. And yeah, and you're not attempting to do it in something that might actually cause you to trip. So when we're talking fall prevention and we're talking safety, this is a great place to start. Because you're saying someone might be tempted to wear sandals or slippers because that's at least I can be independent. Yep. Whereas yep, this will exactly. Be okay. Yes, 100%. And I can't tell you how many falls we've seen in the home and in the community that are resulting from inappropriate footwear because the individual can't wear comfortable footwear because they can't get them on themselves. So this is just a really nice place to start that conversation that often gets missed. Okay. All right. A little more traditional, right? Canes. We talk about canes all the time. It's kind of a boring top, but it doesn't have to be. Canes can be beautiful. Canes can be unique. Canes can be an incredible resource for fall prevention and mobility. So I have several different options here, but I wanted to show this V folding cane because this thing has been on the market for a long time. It's a wildly effective tool and it, I love it for keeping it in places where a mobility aid might be helpful, but you don't necessarily want to have to lug something big and heavy around. I keep a folding cane in the glove box of my car just in case I come across, I, I don't have mobility challenges, but if I come into a situation where there's ice on the ground and I want a little extra stability, I got a cane in my, in my glove box. I can use that to support that. And it's just there when I need it and out of the way when I don't. So a folding cane is an awesome thing to have on hand. These upright canes are really cool and unique. And I've actually seen them become more and more popular because um, they kind of work as a, as a cross between a cane and a walking stick. And they're just designed really well for community mobility. They're going to have the bigger foot on it so that you can use it for more unstable surfaces. And that higher up positioning can give people a lot more stability if they're going to do longer distance walking, hiking through the woods. You can even do with these. So that's an, they're an incredible resource and a really cool design. And then the last one is the Rock Steady Cane, one that most people have never seen before basically works like a hemi walker so a one-sided walker so if you've got somebody who has significant weakness or they need something that's going to be a little bit more stable than a cane but they don't need the whole walker setup a rock steady cane can be a really unique solution these also can be used staggered to act as a handrail on the stairs when a second handrail is not available so another cool resource in the cane category walkers could be so boring, but I found some cool ones. So I think these are worth looking at. The Spurge Home uh, convertible walker is the very first one I've ever seen that actually converts between an upright walker, which is the type that has the forearm slots for you to be able to kind of rest your forearms in, which is awesome for individuals who have some hand or arm weakness that makes it difficult to hold on to a standard walker, or if they're really tall. My taller users, I really like to encourage the attempt to use an, an upright walker because it's going to give you that higher point of stability. So you get less of that hunching posture. You don't lean forward into the walker. You're standing more upright. Again, you're going to have a better line of sight, fall reduction. But the cool thing about the Spurge Home is that it allows you to convert it from an upright walker back down to a standard walker, whether it's for comfort reasons or it's easier to use in certain spaces. So this gives you really great flexibility, dual purpose walker, which if you're going to invest in a mobility aid, um, having something that checks a lot of boxes is a really nice thing. Um, I think the Able Life Folding Lightweight Walker is the one I showed at the beginning. So this is a walker that folds up. I mean, you can see it's so lightweight. I can hold it with one hand here. And the beauty of this one is for community access. Look how tiny this goes. It's just really incredibly small. And for community mobility, we use this one for my grandma. And I love it because when I go to take her to a doctor's appointment or run in to run some errands, I know that I have a really stable walker for her that fits in my smallest vehicle. And it is absolutely no effort for the caregiver to lift in and out of the car. And it, it solves my grandma's need for a mobility aid when we're out in the community. So an awesome solution, Able Life. Um, this is actually a Stander um, brand, which is, they're a really reliable company. So I, I'm always a, a fan of their work. And then the last one is the Drive Nitro. Have you ever seen this one before? No, I've not seen it. It looks like it's powered. Is it powered or is it? It's not powered, but it's a four-wheel walker that also works as a transport wheelchair. So it's oh. both. Hmm. So another dual purpose product. Drive has made has had this one on the market for a while. They keep redoing it a little bit to make it even better. Um, this most recent iteration, I just love it. It's car I mean, the thing folds up. It's lightweight, much smaller to transport than a traditional transport wheelchair. 
a little bit bulkier than, you know, a small walker, but you can have somebody who can walk for short distances and then needs to sit. Or if they just want to be in a, a transport wheelchair the whole time, it's actually fairly comfortable to sit on. It has removable foot rests. It's just, I mean, really cleverly designed. And I, I, I really love how this thing comes together. So if you ever have somebody that needs both, you can now find products that support both all in one, which is great for investment purposes. So you spend it the money up front like, and you only need one thing. It looks like it's got some good storage too. It does. It has a really right? good size basket. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can't really see how it, the mechanism of it, but these foot rests, um, they fold up and out of the way so that you don't have to be removing them and, you know, yes. running the risk of setting them somewhere and then losing them. Um, it, they fold up and out of the way so that they stay attached to the walker, which is, which is really nice. And you can see it has a little handholds so that you can push up and down from. It's not going to be as comfortable and cushy as a traditional wheelchair, but for short distances, again, these are such lifesavers when you're um, having to do short trips out. Uh, I know that these are really popular amongst the chronic illness community as well. So if you have an individual, say, who has earlier stages MS, who's walking for the most part, but then needs to be able to have a wheelchair available for those moments when they just can't do it anymore, it's a fantastic thing to have on hand. All right. So now we're getting into some more like you were talking about earlier about the the bathroom, the bathroom and getting those those really difficult transfers. I picked three things here. Um, these are all, I think, in the more unique category. Um, obviously, when it comes to bathroom transfers, a lot of our consideration is going to be around the toilet and the shower, right? Those are the two places we see the most challenges. And so the very first thing I have here is this security standard pole or standard security pole, excuse me, with the curved grab bar. This is an awesome product. This is, I, I think everyone needs to know about If I never accomplish anything else in my career, <laughs> this pole should be something everyone knows about. And it's funny because I've done videos on it and I, you always get the same comments and it's funny, but it is such a game changer when you are in spaces that don't, that can't handle a traditional grab bar being mounted in the walls. So if you're a renter, for example, mm -hmm. or um, you live in a mobile home, um, or you have a situation where you just can't afford to hire a contractor to install grab bars, this is a tension rod. So it goes between your ceiling and your floor, and you tighten it into position, it can be screwed in for additional stability, but you don't have to, it'll hold steady. And then that curved grab bar has the ability to be positioned all the way around the pole wherever you need it. So in this bathroom setup, you could legitimately use it to help you support you get on and off the toilet and in and out of the shower. Mm. It's just so useful. Another place I love to use these is in the bedroom. Next to the bed, if you have an adjustable bed, which a lot of people now have, there's not a good bed rail <laughs> option for that. And so most people don't have bed rails if you have an adjustable bed, unless it's a hospital bed that comes with rails. So these standard poles can be set up next to the bed and act like a bed rail for those adjustable beds. So just a super practical solution. I've had patients that have ended up installing three or four of them around their house um, because they just found them to be so incredibly useful. And they, I believe the height, ceiling height, it goes up to 10 feet. So it has pretty significant ceiling height um, options. And they come in really beautiful colors now too. Standard just released a, a, like a higher end version of this that's like comes in all sorts of different like moodier, more uh, modern color schemes instead of just the stark white. So you can even make it look a little bit more integrated into your home than this big pole in the middle of your room, which mm. is cool. Um, the Dignity Lift system, we had mentioned before we started here, CES. So the, the big consumer electronics show that went on, uh, Dignity Lift is a company that is based here out of the U.S., they're actually based out of Michigan, where I am. And they have created a um, commode lift system that goes over the toilet or can be separate. It does have a bucket option. And it is power assisted. So it's battery powered or plug in. So you can actually wheel it over the toilet and pe get people from a sit to a standing position. Very similar in concept to a um, sit to stand recliner. Um, but it's for the toilet, which I think is just a just a really fun and cool concept that has so much value if you are dealing with if they have options that are more commercial grade for facilities. They have the home-based uh, ones that are um, going to be better for the residential setups. They even just released and are going and are, are about to release for public sale one that has a bidet attached to it. 
which is just, I mean, that's powerful. Wild. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's the mm -hmm. dignity lift commode. And I did a video on these just recently that mm -hmm. goes a little bit deeper into them, but very cool. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is a slide and pivot transfer bench. So one of the biggest challenges is bathtubs love a bath, love to take a bath. Bathtubs are really hard to step over safely. So having a good transfer bench is a great place to start. And one step beyond the traditional transfer bench, which requires that the person is able to scoot their bottom across the bench, is when that's no longer a safe option, you can upgrade and know that there's these sliding, pivoting transfer benches, which can be a huge problem solver when you're dealing with people who have really limited mobility or to save the caregiver from having to use far too much of their own strength to move somebody in and out of the shower safely. So I love these sliding pivoting transfer benches. So these are, yeah. The, so the people watching, uh, you, mm -hmm. you who are watching, many of you are family members of someone who you really care about, or you are a family member of someone who lives in one of our assisted living, memory care, or independent living communities. You may be a team member. Um, these are exciting products because they can, they can be game changers. Uh, someone might be living in independent living and contemplating needing to move to assisted living simply because they can't get off their toilet. And in independent living, you know, you don't usually have caregivers present helping out. Uh, but if that's the big issue is you just can't get off your toilet, right? Something like this can make mean the difference between staying in independent living, continuing to be in your apartment that you love and having to move to another setting. So it's it's a critical that if you're a team member, if you're a professional uh, in this space, that you know these tools so that you cannot just tell people, all right, time for you to move, right? But you have a whole palette of options to help them stay in the setting that they want to stay in as long as possible. So I love these, uh, Lindsay, these are great. Yeah, it's very powerful. And I think that that conversation is so powerful too, because one of the things as an occupational therapist that I'm so passionate about is delivering hope. Because so often we feel that we're in a hopeless place when we get to this, whether it's a normal part of aging or we're dealing with some sort of disease or physical process that is limiting us, we kind of lose hope over time that like, well, it's out of my hands. But the reality is with the resources and the equipment and the and the, the modern technology that we have available to us, it's really only limited by what you know. And I always say that, like, if you don't know the answer, ask, because there's probably a, a professional, hopefully like myself, who does know that there are options and can can kind of steer you towards those resources. And that's something that I've been doing with building my my online resource library is I really want these things to become universally known <laughs> because mm -hmm. the hope that they can provide and that you can age in place or if you're a caregiver caring for somebody that you have some support to be able to do the best possible for yourself and the person you're caring for all of that goes into play so i'm very passionate about this stuff and i i definitely like to put my money where my mouth is as far as like i try these things i use these things i've worked with patients and, and caregivers with these things and and i just i truly am passionate about what they can bring to the to the life and i will take a moment to just say yep. in the chat um i will put your website so anyone who wants to get to your youtube channel your instagram channel your a plethora of amazing reviews of these products can go to your website and from there you can access instagram and everything else and i know at the end you'll also show us your links but i'm going to make sure those are in the comments um, and anyone who's watching, please, in the comments, put questions, put comments. We'd love to hear what you're thinking, what your experience is with products or problems you're, you're trying to solve. All right, go ahead, Lynn. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I make myself available through all of those social media platforms as well to respond to questions and comments and emails. So I'm an open book. Feel free to take advantage of the resources that I um, have spent a lot of time reviewing over the last few years. Well, the last 10 years, I've been an occupational therapist for 10 years. I've been doing the social media thing for three, but, uh, but 10 years is total. So I wanted to move into the bedroom a little bit. And these are some really, I think really affordable options that can pack a huge punch. Um, the fold down extending bed rail is a solution that not a lot of people are aware of as a bed rail option. And what this bed rail offers is the ability to extend this way so it can become longer depending on how much you need to block the person from being able to exit the bed um, and obviously this is something that's only usable in spaces where this is an allowable solution in many residential facilities 
you cannot do this type of thing because it's viewed as a barrier. But for in home or independent living where you are able to use these, this type of bed rail can be so important in keeping somebody safe and maximizing their mobility. But the other thing about this one is you can actually unlock it and it folds down. So you can get it completely out of the transfer space. So if you're working with somebody who is a slide board transfer, who requires a lift transfer, who requires you know significant assistance in the transfer process, having a, a, a bed rail that gets completely out of the way, much like a, a hospital bed rail would, huge, so important. So it's important to know that these things are available. Another one I absolutely love and install constantly is a bed ladder. So these um, were actually most commonly used with individuals who are spinal cord injury survivors. Um, and they often are placed in the bed as a, as a kind of a way to bypass the availability of abdominal muscles. So when you can't lean for, pull yourself to a sitting position or you can't use your muscles to get into a sitting position, oftentimes you have to rely on your arms and things like that. And the bed ladder can be used for that. Times I've used a bed ladder, C-section recoveries, um, abdominal surgeries and wounds, back surgeries, rib fractures, sternal precautions. Now, you have to be aware of sternal precautions for pulling, but sternal recoveries, things like that. Having a bed rail in place can be hugely effective, and it's a by far cheaper and so much easier to install than a over-the-top. People often think of a trapeze. Those kind of, we see them in hospitals and things like that. This is like, this is going to work like a trapeze, but it's going to cost you so much less and can be installed anywhere around the bed frame. So it can go on the sides, it can go on the head of the bed, it can go under the foot of the bed. And I've done some videos that go into great detail about how to install these and use them. So I love bed ladders. I use them all the time and they're super, super affordable, like $10. Um, leg lifters. For whatever reason, leg lifters, I, I mean, they are so ubiquitous with therapy that we are just like, yeah, obviously leg lifters are great. But so many people don't know that they can use them. <laughs> I never even yeah. heard of it. I don't even know what it is. Wow, it's just a, it's yeah, so cool. this is this is why we're here. So leg lifters, you can buy a leg lifter for really affordably. And what it allows you to do is to move a leg on and off of a surface. So oftentimes they're used in the bed like I'm showing here. And what you would do is, so sometimes I've used these is, edema so swelling if you have a very heavy limb because of some swelling it may be nearly impossible to move it yourself with just your muscles of your leg but if you can use your arms to help move that leg now you can get that leg off the edge of the bed and now you're transferring yourself independently or with a lot less physical assistance required um they're great during surgical recoveries if you've got somebody with fractures or a surgical recovery of the lower limb you can use a leg lifter to help guide that limb in and out of bed with a lot less pain. And one of the fascinating things as a therapist that I always found was using a leg lifter and incorporating a leg lifter early on in transfers when people are so sore uh, following surgery or a fracture or injury. If they're able to be part of the process and I'm not just manually lifting their leg and moving it on and off the bed, if they're able to help even just a little bit, their pain goes down. Not necessarily because it's less painful, but because they have perceived control. So using something like a leg lifter to give a little bit of independence back, even if they still need help, can also help with pain management. So there's just there's just a whole host of reasons why I would recommend having these as, an, as a resource. But it's a great way to help encourage people to be more independent with getting their legs elevated. If you've got people with congestive heart failure or chronic swelling and edema or just neuropathy, getting legs elevated for a period of time can be very difficult. If you don't have the strength to lift your leg up onto a pillow, you incorporate the leg lifter. Now they can get their legs elevated. They can get that swelling down. Having lower edema re reduces the risk of a whole host of complications, including falls. So one of the, so just having these little resources and tools and kind of incorporating them into your daily routine can make a huge difference in the long run in preventing those issues in the future. And the cool thing about a leg lifter is you can buy one or you can make one. A lot of people just take a belt, loop around the end, and now they can kind of fit, they kind of lasso their foot and use that belt like a leg lifter. Um, you know, there's just a whole bunch of ways you can make these work um, very affordably, and and the value that they bring compared to the cost that they are is pretty substantial. So I love a good leg lifter. Very very helpful in the in the bedroom or in the recliner situations, wherever in the car. They're a fantastic yeah. car solution, as yeah. you mentioned earlier. Getting a heavy limb in and out of the car. I've used them a lot for that. I could have used that with my big heavy boot that I had to get in that <laughs> car. 
I, you and I both, we both broke our, we both broke our leg around the same time. I broke my foot. You, and I, I absolutely, when I had my big heavy boot on and I was so swollen, it's amazing how heavy a lower, a lower limb full of fluid yeah. mm-hmm. can be. <laughs> so yes, the, the leg lifters, I, I cannot underscore this enough are so, so useful to have on hand. And quite honestly, there just should be in a toolkit that you keep right next to your reacher and your mm-hmm. long handled chew horn. Just keep them all together, mm-hmm. have them in your car, have them in your bedroom, wherever you need them. Cause that's, they're just fantastic. So I think the next ones are going to be some, some, we'll kind of rapid fire these ones off, but the slide boards, slide boards are really common in healthcare. Mm-hmm. We use them all the time to help transport people between two surfaces who can't bear weight. But just knowing that slide boards aren't always just a straight board. Here's an example of one that's got notches cut out to allow it to be used on a toilet and it's notched around the uh, wheelchair wheel, which is such a common issue with them. There are slide boards that have a moving gliding seat so that the person doesn't have to move their skin across the seat if they have skin tear issues or already have a wound that they're trying to recover from. So knowing that there's a variety of slide boards, not just the one size fits all design that we're really accustomed to, can be so helpful in expanding the way that we use them and making them as safe as possible. Um, Pivot discs. Pivot discs are an awesome, really affordable resource for helping to do those like 90 to 180 degree transfers. So if you're moving somebody from the edge of their bed, for example, over onto a chair or onto a commode, having a pivot disc underfoot along with a good solid gate belt to hold onto can give caregivers and the person they're transferring a much easier process because they don't have to do that awkward foot shuffle or potentially, you know, that thing where they start to drop on you. You can move them much faster and much safer. So a pivot disc is a super affordable option for those standing level transfers. And then this seated transfer sling is actually a newer one for me. I was, I was actually introduced to this while working with a classic car museum who was looking to be able to transfer wheelchair bound um, visitors in and out of classic cars safely, but they couldn't use a, a powered lift system. They wanted to be able to manually lift people and they wanted options. So this sling allows you to put it under somebody who's in a wheelchair, clip them in with a seatbelt system. So they're harnessed in really securely. And then it has um, six grab points, three on each side for caregivers to be able to lift and transfer, whether that's across the slide board or open air, depending on how far you're moving somebody um, in their seated position. So then you can sit them back on whatever surface. So it's a dependent transfer solution that doesn't require a lift or any other expensive products. Um, but can be really effective. It just takes a few extra hands. But this is one of those in a pinch, can't fit a transfer um, system that is available. And it's, again, relatively affordable under $50. Another quick, important point on this matter is many Mm -hmm. people are still looking at this going, well, I'll just lift them up under their shoulders and move them, right? And sure, that you can do that. A, you're going to hurt yourself, period, end Mm -hmm. of story. B, you are hurting that elder. Um, One of the things we've learned in our partnership with Humanitude, which is a group out of Europe and Asia that's training their care teams all over Europe and Asia, but has yet to reach the United States, is that one of the reasons we here in America see so many people as they age having to be spoon fed by the time they get to 90 years old. And it's not because their dementia makes them not able to feed themselves. It's because we've been lifting them in America under their shoulders and tiny little tears are developing in the shoulders Mm -hmm. that end up making it so that person can't lift their arm past their shoulder. And so these are really important for saving people from incredible damage. There's, you, there's a product that's not on here very, and it's one that is quite popular on Amazon and I cringe every time I see it. It's a product that's basically two sets of handles, one handle on the caregiver side, one handle on the person side who's looking to sit to stand or transfer. And basically the two people are just pulling on each other, right? And it, it's such a dangerous solution that was clearly not developed by people who understand the physiology of transfers because the biomechanisms that are involved in that are terrifying. But these things have 10,000 reviews on Amazon, meaning they're being sold 50,000 units every month of these things are being sold to caregivers because they don't know that there's a safer solution and they're desperate for solutions. But you're absolutely right. That pulling motion 
is tearing shoulders. It's tearing pec muscles. It's causing extremely significant tendencies for people to lean back and create bad habits and postural habits. Um, they're just they're just really reckless, and it always breaks my heart when I see them become become such popular tools. And the reality is, is we just don't do a very good job of educating folks on what are the better solutions. So they go to what's the simplest solution. Um, and, and unfortunately, I can't, we can't be in every living room, but I hope we can spread the word and get people making really good choices for not only themselves, but those that they're caring for. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's my soapbox moment. I, those, <laughs> those pull the, those pull the standards drive me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any other products? Okay, great. I great. don't, I don't, I can't, I you gave me, you told me 10. Yeah. So I think I gave like 13 Perfect. there because I, I did too many. But um, I didn't want to overwhelm people with options, but I do want to point out that basically all of these options and so many more I've kind of compiled into videos that have playlists on my YouTube channel, as well as on my Instagram. Um, and now I have a TikTok because the, the Gen Zers told me I had to. So, uh, <laughs> so I do try to make this stuff um, really digestible and give lots of practical information about what's out there and what exists and how we can make life a little bit easier for, for everybody across the lifespan. Lindsay, we're so thankful that you are on the front lines of making sure these tools are available to families, families know what they are, uh, because it can be overwhelming to walk into uh, yep. a Walgreens or to go on Amazon and be like, I need help with this subject. Then you get 50 different products and you have no idea which one is worth it trying out and which one will hurt somebody like you just said right which ones if i buy i'm actually going to hurt them so so thankful you're here. well i'm glad to be here i'm glad to have the opportunity to talk with you and your community it's my pleasure awesome. well we'll see you next month as we dive into some more really important topics on how yes. we help those that we love through challenging accidents surgeries and other situations so thanks for being here Lindsay. it's my pleasure thanks for having me